Hi, I'm Megan and welcome to my kitchen. In today's What's for Dinner video, I'll be sharing with you what meals we had this past week. Our dinners were easy to make, budget friendly, and delicious. So if you'd like to get some weeknight meal ideas for your family, then just keep watching. I'm excited for today's video because it is a collaboration with Lacey at Dinner at Lacey's. I'll include a link to her channel in the description box below. Be sure to head on over to her channel, check it out, show her some love, and tell her that I sent you. She used to make YouTube videos, but she stopped for several months, and she has just recently started back doing what's for dinner videos and grocery hauls. I've watched her newer videos, and her meals all look so yummy. So like I said, you'll definitely want to check her channel out. Again, I'll have it linked in the description box below, and if you're coming over to my channel from Lacey's welcome. Like I said earlier, my name is Megan and I also do uh, weekly what's for dinner videos and grocery hauls similar to Lacey. I hope that you will take a look around my channel and that you'll consider subscribing. Let's get into today's recipes. Tonight for dinner, I'm making In-N-Out style burgers and fries. I'm going to start out by making this sauce. Now, I found several different recipes for this online, and I kind of combined them all into my own. So I'll include the measurements that I use in the description box below, but feel free to change it up and use whatever measurements you want according to your taste. In this small mixing bowl, I'm going to add in the mayonnaise, ketchup, relish, apple cider vinegar, sugar, mustard, salt and pepper and I stirred that up and tasted it and I felt like it needed a little bit extra and several of the recipes that I found did call to add in some garlic powder, onion powder, and paprika so I decided to add that and then I mixed it together really well and then I placed this into the refrigerator overnight. Now you can just do 30 minutes to an hour but you definitely want to give it some time so that the flavors can meld together. And just a quick note about tonight's dinner. I am in no way claiming that this is authentically, you know, copycat in and out We haven't been to in and out for years. And when we did go, we only went a couple times. There's just not one anywhere near us in Tennessee. So again, not claiming that this is authentic, but it was delicious. We do have a restaurant here in Nashville that they do like copycat style in and out burgers and sauces and their fries and everything. We go there pretty often and we love that restaurant. It's so good. There they have what they call Cali fries, which are similar similar to In-N-Out Styles animal fries, but they do theirs a little bit differently. They do the fries, the sliced American cheese, the sauce, and the grilled onions like In-N-Out, but then they also add crumbled cooked bacon and pickled jalapeno slices, and their, che their cheese fries, or their Cali fries rather, are so, so good. I literally crave those, and that's actually what I was craving this night, so that's what I was trying to replicate more than the In-N-Out Style burgers. To keep it easy tonight, I'm going to cook up these Orida Extra Crispy Fast Food Fries in the air fryer. If you've never had these before, I recommend you give them a try. They're delicious. I'm also going to cook up these beef burger patties from Great Value. These are actually really good too. I was kind of surprised the first time we had them because they're just frozen hamburger patties, but they're really good. And here are the onions that I'm going to use on the fries. All I did was take an onion, I diced it up, I placed it into the skillet over about medium low heat. I didn't add any butter or oil, but you could. I did add just a little splash of water and then about a teaspoon of brown sugar and I just cooked them low and slow until they were nice and caramelized. I cooked the hamburger patties on my Cuisinart Griddler. I've mentioned this several times before on my channel, but I love this. It's so convenient. I have a link for it in the description box below in case you want to take a look at it, but I just seasoned the hamburger patties with some seasoned salt and cooked it on that until they were done to our liking. And I'm not sure, I can't remember, but I don't think In-N-Out uses sesame seed buns, but I found these at Aldi. These are the brioche buns. We've had the brioche buns before, but not the sesame seeds, so I gave these a try tonight, and we really enjoyed these. And as I mentioned earlier, I like to cook those Orida fast food fries in my air fryer. I cooked these at 400 degrees. I cooked them for about eight minutes and then shook the basket. And then I cooked these for, I think, another seven or eight minutes. Just cook them until they're golden brown like you like your fries. If you like them a little underdone, don't cook them as long. If you like them really crispy, leave them in there a couple extra minutes. And here are the finished plates. So for our burgers, we have the buns, the burgers, a slice of American cheese, the sauce, and then a slice of tomato. And then on my husband's, he has lettuce. I don't prefer lettuce on my hamburgers. He wanted fries with a little bit of the sauce for dipping. And then for my plate, I did the fries like I mentioned earlier. So I took the fries, I added a slice of American cheese, some of the sauce, the grilled onions, and some crumbled cooked bacon. I left off the pickled jalapenos. 
these fries, y'all, they were delicious. I'm a potato girl. You can keep your sweets, but give me a potato any which way. I will take it. And these fries were so, so good. I'm embarrassed to admit it, but I have these same style fries for lunch for the next two days because we have leftover uh, sauce and grilled onions. But this was delicious. I highly recommend you give this a try. This was so good. And that's uh, a quick note. I just thought of that. If you are cooking for two or for, you know, a small family, like if it's just you and you all have a toddler or something, I would cut the recipe for the sauce that I'm going to list below in half because this did make quite a bit of sauce. So if you have a large family, that's fine. But for a small family like ours, you might want to cut that in half. But that was dinner this night. Tonight for dinner, I'm making bruschetta chicken. I'm going to start out by making the side dish. I've had this recipe pinned for years and I keep meaning to make it and I don't know why I haven't yet, but I wanted to make it tonight. I just have some water in this large pot. I'm going to add in some salt and then I'm adding some baby red potatoes. I'm going to turn that on high, bring that to a boil and cook these potatoes for about 15 minutes until they're fork tender and then I'm going to drain them. I've got my oven preheated to 425 degrees. On this cookie sheet, I'm going to spray it with some cooking spray. Then I'm going to add the potatoes and spread them out until they're a couple inches apart. I'm just going to take this mason jar and push on them. And you want to smash the potatoes and break them apart. The more little breaks and crevices you have, the crispier they'll get. Here I have some melted butter. I'm going to add in some garlic powder and stir that together. And then I'm going to brush that on top of the potatoes. I'm going to sprinkle some salt on each potato and you always want to make sure you salt your potatoes. I mean, unless you're watching your salt, of course, but if you don't salt potatoes, they really taste like nothing. I'm going to add some freshly ground black pepper and then a little bit of this shredded Parmesan cheese. I'm going to place these into the preheated oven and cook these for about 25 minutes until they're golden brown. I'm going to go ahead and season up my chicken and let it kind of marinate while the potatoes are cooking. Usually I make an olive oil and balsamic vinegar marinade for this bruschetta chicken, but I forgot to marinate it tonight. So I'm adding some garlic powder, sea salt, ground pepper. And then while I was grabbing the garlic powder, I saw this badia or badia, however you say it, uh, seasoning. I've been meaning to use this, just didn't know what to use it on. And I decided to try it tonight and it gave it good flavor. We enjoyed it, but I'm going to season both sides. And again, just set that aside while the potatoes are cooking. I'm going to start the second side dish, which are peas and mushrooms. In this skillet over about medium heat, I'm going to add a little bit of butter and then some sliced mushrooms. Normally, I would add the butter and then add some chopped up onions and cook the onions until they're translucent and then add everything else. But when I went to chop up the onion, it was rotten. So I skipped that tonight. But I've added the mushrooms and then I'm going to add some frozen peas. Then I'm going to add a little pinch of sugar and some garlic powder, stir that together and just cook this on medium, medium low while everything else is cooking. You just wanna cook this until the peas are thawed and cooked through and the mushrooms are nice and tender. Now I'm going to make the bruschetta topping for the chicken. Here I have a tomato that I've washed. I'm just going to dice that and place that into this bowl. Next, I'm going to add in some chopped basil. Just like with the onion, I opened up the basil and most of it was rotten. I did not have a lot to use, not as much as I wanted anyway. I don't know, Walmart was really slacking with the produce this week. I had just gotten the basil and the onion like two days before this um, through grocery pickup. But I'm going to add in the basil and then add some sea salt. And I added some dried basil as well because again, like I said, I didn't have as much fresh as I wanted. I stirred that together and then just set that aside while the rest of dinner was finishing up cooking. To cook the chicken breast, I have the skillet over about medium heat. I've added just a little bit of oil. I'm going to saute the chicken for about five to seven minutes per side or until the chicken reaches 165 degrees internal temperature. And here's the finished chicken, the peas and mushrooms, and the potatoes. And here are the plates. So we have the potatoes, the peas and mushrooms, and then for the chicken, I just placed the chicken breasts on each plate. And then I added a little bit of the bruschetta topping. I like to add in a little bit of chopped mozzarella at the very end. So I did that here. And then I added some of this Trader Joe's balsamic vinegar glaze to the top of the chicken. And this was delicious. This was so good. Tonight for dinner, I'm making teriyaki salmon. I'm going to start out by marinating the salmon. So here I have this piece of salmon that I got from Aldi. I'm just going to cut it up into fillets. Next, I'm going to add the salmon to a Ziploc bag 
And I had several recipes that I was looking at to do a teriyaki salmon marinade for, but when I looked at all of the ingredients, they were all basically in this soyaki sauce from Trader Joe's. So I just thought I'd save myself a little extra effort and just use the soyaki sauce. So I've stirred it up together really well. I'm going to add some to the Ziploc bag, get as much of the air out as I can, and then I'm going to place this into the refrigerator and allow this to marinate. I'm going to make a side dish of teriyaki rice pilaf. This is a new recipe. I will include the recipe for this as well as recipes from the rest of today's video in the description box below. In this skillet over about medium heat, I'm going to add a little bit of oil. Then I'm going to add some chopped green onions. This is the white part. I'm going to add my mushrooms, season those with a little bit of salt and pepper. Next, I'm going to add some cooked rice. You could use some leftover rice. That would be a good use for this, but I didn't have any on hand, so I just used this 90-second microwaved rice that I cooked, and then I'm going to add that, add my frozen peas. Then I'm going to add some of that same soyaki sauce from Trader Joe's. Then I'm going to stir that until it's well combined and allow it to cook for three to five minutes or until the peas are heated through and the mushrooms are tender. To cook the salmon, you really can cook it whichever way you'd prefer. You can saute it on the stove, you could cook it in the oven, you could grill it. I cooked mine in the air fryer at 390 degrees for about six to seven minutes. If you like your salmon well done, you'll wanna cook it for a couple extra minutes. And here's that rice peel off. Let me show you our plates. To serve this up, I added some of the rice peel off to the plate and I garnished it with a little more chopped onion. For the salmon, I garnished that with some sesame seeds and chopped green onion as well. This was dinner this night. This was really yummy. For dinner this night, my husband was still at the gym at dinner time. I didn't want to cook anything big or extravagant just for me, so I made some avocado toast. I love this. It's one of my favorite things. I love it for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. I just took a couple slices of bread, toasted it. I spread it with a little bit of mashed avocado. I seasoned the avocado with some salt and pepper. I added some cooked bacon. This was just left over from breakfast. A slice of tomato, which I also seasoned the tomato. I know that might seem like a lot of salt. I didn't add a lot of salt at each step, but avocado without salt is very bland, and then tomato tomatoes really need salt as well. Then I topped that with a fried egg with a nice runny yolk and that was my dinner this night. For dinner this night, I made brats. I'm going to start out by making the side dish first. I'm making a corn salad. I love this recipe. It's so light and fresh. I love making this in the summertime, especially here in the South. It gets so hot. In this bowl, I have some corn. Usually, I'd prefer to use thawed frozen corn or fresh corn off the cob, but I didn't have any on hand, so I just used canned corn, which I drained. I'm going to add the corn to this bowl. Then I'm going to add some cherry tomatoes that I've diced up. I'm going to add some feta cheese. And then you can add some oil to this if you would like, but the recipe also says that you can add a little bit of Italian dressing. I like to add a little bit of the Italian dressing and skip the oil. Then I'm going to add some diced up cucumber. I'm going to add some chopped fresh basil then salt and pepper and a little bit of lime juice. I'm going to stir that together. And then you can place this into the refrigerator for 30 minutes or an hour to allow it to chill, or you can serve it immediately. For the brats, I'm using these turkey cheddar links from Johnsonville. We really like these. Today, I'm going to cook them in my air fryer. I cook them at 390 degrees for about six to eight minutes. I shook them halfway through. You just wanna make sure they're warmed all the way through. And here are the finished plates. So we both have some of the corn salad. And then for me, I prefer not to eat sausages and brats like this on a bun. So I just had no bread. For my husband, I'd forgotten to get some hot dog buns. Well, I lie. I did get some, but I had gotten them for Father's Day. And I didn't want to have to go back to the store just for hot dog buns. So for my husband, we just used plain white bread. And then he added a little bit of ketchup, mustard, and relish. And then not pictured was some watermelon that we had with dinner this night. It was really good. For the last dinner in this week's video, we ordered pizza. I was getting caught up on videos from Moss Family TV, and Fallon mentioned in one of them that they had ordered Papa John's for dinner that night, and that just sounded really good to us tonight. So we ordered a pepperoni pizza. Well, half of it was just pepperoni. The other half had pepperoni, mushrooms, and pineapple. And then we ordered some of their, I think they call them chicken poppers, and that was our dinner this night. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, please hit the thumbs up button below and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. And like I mentioned earlier, please make sure you go and visit Lacey's channel and show her some love. I hope you have a great rest of the day. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.